What's up, YouTube? Anything I can do that's gonna help cut trips back and forth to the van when I'm 10 stories high, I'm taking it. I've put together everything you need to go from start to finish on an evacuation after a repair or new install and fit it all into a five gallon bucket. Let's check it out. guys so I've got everything like I said besides the vacuum pump itself an oil drain pan if you do need that and an extension cord I'll go ahead and I'll just kind of open the bucket and pull everything out kind of quickly and then go through it a little bit more in depth uh, as needed right on the top I'm gonna keep a handful of blue rags can't have too many of them and when you don't have them is when you're always gonna need them right underneath that I have a five foot quarter inch hose attached to my VN500 nitrogen pressure regulator slash flow meter. Figure if you're going to be doing an evacuation, you're going to be doing a pressure test beforehand. So I just go ahead and I keep this in here and it knocks out two birds with one stone. If you are doing large systems, commercial work, stuff like that, and you think you may be going into the time where you're going to have to do some oil changes, you can easily fit one or two of these uh, quart bottles of vacuum pump oil. Um, I like to buy these sizes because when I get the gallon, I just don't trust it once I've opened it to the atmosphere. I figure it's uh, compromised at that point. These, uh, this size here will fill my vacuum pump uh, and leave about, I don't know, this much oil left, which I just discard. Beside that, I keep my main parts bin here. And we'll go into this here in a moment. What's left from here are my actual vacuum rated hoses themselves, which is two half inch hoses with quarter inch ends on one side, three eighths and half inch on the other. I got one of each because my particular vacuum pump already has a half inch and three eighths port. Makes it just easy for me to hook up that way. Here was that main clear plastic uh, parts bin that I showed you before. It's made by Husky is very well made it is completely watertight waterproof has a gasket and seals when you lock this clasp here it's got a carabiner on it in case you wanted to hang it from something and it's just it's made of a very thick rugged plastic the kind of thing you see guys selling uh for cell phones and stuff like that to keep them from getting wet if they fall in the water same same thing so um i know a lot of guys right now are using these briefcases with you know foam inserts that they cut out to fit every tool perfectly and I think that's great um, but to me I wanted something that just was all-inclusive and, and and fit the entire contents of what I need for an evacuation into one container um, I just didn't really find that a foam you know cut out case for this stuff was necessary these aren't gonna get jumbled around um, once they're in that bucket so this works fine for me I can see everything from the outside and um, frankly, if it's raining out or, or uh, more humid out than I'd want, um, I don't have to concern myself with these things getting contaminated. A real quick look inside of what I've actually got. I've got a uh, set of Appian uh, core removal tools in 5 16 for mini splits and VRF and the quarter inch for everything else. I keep a service wrench with an adapter for opening up new valve stems and releasing refrigerant into a new system. And I've got my micron gauge coupling uh, brass fittings here. This is the one that actually came with my micron gauge. Uh, great concept, uh, not crazy about the gasket and depressor situation. From what I can see, they're actually not really replaceable. Uh, they're not uh, easy to change out, and I've had this leak on me. So Yellow Jacket did just come out with their version of it looks very solid and well made I keep it plugged and uh, like all yellow jacket hoses you can you can replace the depressors and the gaskets as needed if you suspect a leak I keep several Appian rebuild kits in here because these are vacuum rated but they absolutely do leak um, I've had them leak out of the box and I've had them leak over time so these kits are um, a necessity and when you do rebuild them they do uh, perform as advertised they are they're probably the best tool you can get for that job but make sure you're keeping extra parts or it'll let you down and uh, you'll pull your hair out I'm wondering why you can't pull a vacuum 
and then I keep in this in this kit right now the the blue vac micro micron gauge and I keep it plugged or capped as well along with everything else that I can I went ahead and bought this little bucket seat parts bin too because I wanted to literally like I said have a hundred percent of what I need for an evacuation this thing holds all the little crap that you don't necessarily keep on you and you end up forgetting it's Murphy law if you don't have this stuff in your pocket or in a bag or somewhere with you when you're on the roof you are going to need it I'll go ahead and open this up pretty self-explanatory but again like I said this is this this thing right here is what's gonna bail you out uh, when you're way up high and don't want to run back to the van this is all stuff that you'll be cursing the whole time going back to your van to find so some extra batteries from the micron gauge Yellow Jacket's little uh, gasket removal tool. There's a little hook inside of that blue handle that really makes it easy to change those gaskets and depressors. Uh, I keep three eighths and quarter inch gaskets there. Some Schrader cores, various sized caps, some Nylog to make sure everything's leak free. Um, a solenoid magnet for during my pressure test if because since I'm only running one hose, uh, if I have a system with a solenoid, it makes it a little easier there to make sure I'm pressurizing both sides. This little guy over here is uh, again from Yellow Jacket and all that is is a small orifice there. Let's you charge uh, refrigerant as a liquid and helps meter it out um, to avoid slugging the compressor. So uh, it's a little less clunky than the uh, oh I can't think of it off the top of my head. The one you always see in the supply houses hooks onto your manifold it's humongous um, I've been giving this a try and it's been working out really well for me so uh, again you can put anything else in here that you see fit but for me this is about everything that I encounter this is all the little what-ifs the little uh, you know Murphy law things that pop up um, that should allow me to just stay on the roof at this point. Bring that bucket up and get it uh, done. I hesitate to even really bring this up in the video, but uh, I will mention it. This is the last thing I do keep in my bucket. Um, I only recommend considering using one of these if you're completely and 100% uh, capable and educated enough with electricity to use it and test one, two, and three times before you really even use this. Make sure you know exactly the voltage that you're hooking onto and be very careful handling it once it's live, okay? Um, being in commercial, uh, you, we all know there's, it's just not a reality. Sometimes it is not a reality to use an extension cord. Um, anytime it, that it is, I'm using one. So, but I do, I am gonna keep this in the bucket for those times where you absolutely cannot have, uh, uh, find any access to power and this is the only reasonable way to get your job done. But again, make sure it's fused and make sure you know how to use it. Check, double check, triple check the supply voltage before you hook up and either kill yourself or burn up and ruin your equipment. And here's everything loaded up. Ready to roll. And once the lid's back on, it's as simple as keeping this in your van and when it's time to do a repair, going ahead and grabbing your bucket. Uh, throwing a carabiner or tying a rope to it and roping it up to where you need to do your job. I fully intend in the next few weeks to also make a bucket similar to this set up just for recovery. It'll be a very similar setup, um, a separate set of hoses dedicated to recovery, another set of core removal tools, a tank heater, um, and then the molecular transformer from CPS or make your own, but you know, the sub cooler that you can hook up and help um, recover faster with it sitting in running water or ice, whatever you've got. The bucket itself can serve as the receptacle for the um, subcooler, and I would actually take a hole saw and uh, stagger out and drill holes around the bucket as an overflow to set your uh, subcooler in, put a hose in, and the water would run out like this instead of filling the whole five gallon bucket. That project is still in the planning phase, We'll get it rolled out and shot as soon as I get it all together. In the meantime, guys, please, if you thought of anything during this video that you would contribute or add to this bucket that I may have missed or would work better for you, let me know down in the comments. We can have a conversation about it. And if you enjoyed the video and you've enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing. It helps me know that the content I'm coming out with is stuff people really want to hear. And it Well, really, no, and that's just it. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Stay safe out there. 
We'll talk to you on the next one.